All right, this time we got the uh, Engage New York module three, lesson four problem set. Um, we're gonna be using two skills that hopefully we learned in class today or the other day, uh, factoring expressions and grouping expressions, both of which are ways that we can rewrite expressions equivalently um, in so that they look like this. I'm just gonna make one up right now. You could have two times the quantity three X plus seven. Um, in class, I probably have been calling this factored form or a factored form expression. Um, another way you could say this is the product of two factors. Um, product means to multiply two or more things. Um, and factors are um, just the things being multiplied. So in this case, two is a factor and the quantity in parentheses 3x plus 7 is also a factor, and they're being multiplied, so it's a product of two factors, or you could call it a factored form expression. Same thing. So our goal for these top two categories here um, is to just make, um, it's just to rewrite all of these expressions, whether they're strictly numerical, like this one, only numbers, or the ones that have variables as well. We can use factoring expressions, which I'll remind you what that is here in a second, and grouping um, to, to, to make it look like this. Say the same thing, but make it look like this. Um, we might also have to combine some like terms and add some things up um, before we group or factor. Some of these get really tricky. In fact, there's been times when I've done these before and like actually legitimately gotten stuck and had to think about it for a second. We'll see if that happens this time around. Um, so look at the first one. One times three, is a term like we've been working a lot with like 2x 3x negative 5x or whatever but that's just a number times a letter and the letter really stands for a number right so it's in in a way it's really just a number times a number that's this is number times number plus number times number so one times three is a term and seven times three is a term and they both have a common factor one times three has a factor of three right here and seven times three has a common factor of three here. So we can use this thing called factoring expressions um, to factor the three out. We start by writing a three, and then we open a parentheses. And then what goes in the parentheses is what's left from each term after we divide it by three, which essentially just like cancels that three out that's being multiplied. So one times three divided by three leaves you with just one. And then seven times three divided by three leaves you with just seven. And now these two are equivalent expressions that say the same thing, that equal the same thing. If you did the math on both of them, I think they both come out to 24, but they're just different ways of saying and thinking about something. For example, let's say you were going to the store and you were gonna buy three things that each cost a dollar, three times one, and three things that each cost seven dollars. I draw them over here. So maybe uh, these square objects each cost one dollar. And the circular objects each cost seven dollars. I don't know why I made that last one so small. The original expression is saying you could figure out the price of these things by doing three times one and three times seven, and you would get three, right? And you would get 21 and you'd add them up and get 24. The second one is saying, you could pair these things up. You've got three of one thing and three of the other. So if you wanted to, you could think of it as uh, you've got three of these pairs. You've got three of a one plus seven, three of a one plus seven, and this other one of a one plus seven. And one plus seven is eight. So this equals eight and this equals eight. And if you added all those up, you would also get 24. And so they're just different ways that you could like think of the numbers. And so different ways of expressing that same way that we think about things. Um, so that was factoring. We factored out the three. The other skill that we need is grouping. It's sort of like the opposite of what we just did. 
Grouping is another way to think about it is it's combining like terms, but you can do it with things in parentheses, not just terms by themselves. Each thing in the parentheses here is identical. You got a one plus seven, a one plus seven, and a one plus seven. Just like here, we had a one plus seven and a one plus seven and a one plus seven. So in total, you have three one plus sevens. And so we can write it as three one plus sevens. So this second expression is equivalent to this one, which was also equivalent to this one, but we're just using different skills to like get there. Um, all right, now the next one is a little bit weirder because you can't factor it right off top. This term, two times one, has a two and a one in it, okay? And this last term here also has a two, a factor of two. Now, you might look at the middle one and say, well, it has a factor of one and a factor of seven, but it doesn't um, because factors are things that are being multiplied. That's a one plus a seven. So there's not really any clear factors right away. Well, one thing that's nice is you can factor parts of expressions and not factor other parts. So I see that this first term here has a factor of two, and this last term here has a factor of two. So I'm gonna factor two out from just those two pieces here, this piece here and this piece here. And I'm gonna let the one plus seven there in the middle just sort of wait while I do this. Um, so I'm gonna factor out a two, let's see here. So I'll start by opening up or writing a two and then opening a parentheses. If I factor out the two from two times one, I'm left with just one. And if I factor out two from seven times two, I'm left with seven. And then I still had that middle one plus seven left. But now I can combine things because the first step I did got me two one plus sevens and my leftover was another one plus seven. I can group those together for a total of three one plus sevens, which again is equivalent to the previous um, the previous expression. So they're just throwing different ways of writing the same thing at us and seeing if we can use our skills to combine them in the same, like to arrive at the same final expression. All right, so the next one's obviously different though. We got an H in here, right? Um, so H times three plus six times three, I noticed that both expressions have threes in them. So I'm gonna factor out the three. Let's see, let me, I'm gonna keep switching colors because there's so little room to write here that I've, if I keep the colors different, at least you can kind of tell where I'm going. So this one's gonna be orange. Uh, let's see here, factor out the three. So I start by writing a three. H times three is the same as three H. It's just written improperly if you ask me. Um, so three times H divided by three leaves you with just H and three times six divided by three leaves you with just six. And so I, I know how the pattern of this worksheet goes. The first three, A, B, C, all were supposed to arrive at three times one plus seven. The next three are all supposed to be three times H plus six. E is pretty easy to see how that happens. F, on the other hand, you got to do two, two steps, just like I did in C. C and F are essentially the same trick or the same process. So see if you can do what I did in C to make F look like this. All right, and then, um, so I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on to I, because I is another one we have to do the same trick. And so in case you want to see it again, so you can turn around and use it in F, uh, here you go. I see that this first term has a two and a J. And this last term has a two and a K. So they both have a common factor of two. I can factor out two from those. I can't factor out two from K plus J. In fact, I can't factor out anything from there because they're being added. So I'm going to let the K plus J piece just sort of wait while I factor out a two from 2j, it's going to leave me with j, and from 2k, it's going to leave me with k. And then the k plus j just sort of waited, right? So I got to put it in here. 
Well, J plus K and K plus J, that's the same thing. It doesn't matter if those are switched around. And so now I have a total of one, two, three J plus Ks. Okay, that's the same process that you should be going through there on F. So give it a shot. All right. Um, this is kind of more the same. Um, A is exactly like A here, except instead of a one, three, seven, three, you got six, seven, three, seven, but the process is the same. Um, let's see here. Let's group these. Eight plus nine plus eight plus nine plus eight plus nine. That's three eight plus nines. So we got three times eight plus nine. Okay. C. I think this is going to be another one of those partial ones. No, actually, I think this is this is one of the ones where I've always. Uh, all right, let's let's try this one. So this one, this is one of those ones I've always felt was kind of weird, and I'm not exactly sure what really they expect us to do here, but I do see that I could factor out four from every piece in this whole thing because four is divisible by four, right? It's really just four times one. 12 is divisible by four. Four is divisible by four. And five times four has a factor of four built into it, right? Or, or it's also divisible by four. I'm not even sure if this is gonna lead us to the answer we want. I'm just gonna try it. I'm gonna factor out a four from this whole thing. And so what goes in the parentheses is all this stuff had we divided it by four. So four divided by four is one. Uh, 12 divided by four is three. Four divided by four is one again. And then five times four divided by four leaves us with five. And so we get four times one plus three plus one plus five, which I suppose we could add all that up. Was that 10? Four times 10? Honestly, I don't even know if that's the answer that the people who made this problem set were looking for, but technically it satisfies what we're supposed to do, right? We we got it as a product of two factors, four and 10 are factors, and that's that's our job. So whatever. Um, another way we could have done this one is just literally adding everything up. Well, there's a multiplication. So what, 20 plus another 16, right? 12 plus four is 16, so 36 plus four is 40. And then once we knew the whole thing equals 40, we could have just written that as the product of any two numbers, right? Five times eight, four times 10, two times 20. I, if there's some other trick to this one that they want us to see, I don't I don't see it right off top just by looking at it right now. Um, all right, so... Yeah, no, I'm still looking at it. I'm trying to see if there's some. All right, anyways, let's move on. Uh, the next one, 2y times 3 plus 4 times 3. Okay, that one's a little more, more obvious, right? We got a times 3 in both, in both terms. So factor out this 3, please. Start by writing a 3. And then put in, in the parentheses what would be left after you divide 2y times 3 by 3 and 4 times 3 by 3. You should be able to do that one. Um, on E, we've got two little groups of x plus 5, right? So just combine them up. That's called grouping. Uh, we got one x plus 5 plus another x plus 5. That's a total of 2x plus 5. So F, again, is another one where Nothing jumps out at me right away as like the, the obvious strategy to this one. And so I think what I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to draw an arrow over here. And my advice to you on this one is to just combine everything. 
regularly, like we've practiced before, don't do any factoring or grouping right up top. Just say 3x plus another x. Remember, we don't have to care about these parentheses because the only thing in front of them is a plus symbol. So 3x, or 3x plus another x is 4x. And then you got a 2 and a 5 times 2. 5 times 2 is 10 plus 2 is 12. All right, so this whole thing equals 4x plus 12. Can you factor something out from there? Like if, if I leave you from there, can you see a common factor between 4x and 12? What numbers go into 12? This does, right? So maybe you could factor that out. Maybe you could finish this one from here to write 4x plus 12 as a product of two factors. And so I think that's the last tough one. I think the rest of these you should be able to do not too bad. Um, you got two different variables down here in the last one, but um, just combine them up first. 2r plus r is 3r. It's supposed to be an r. And s plus 2s is 3s. And now it should be pretty obvious to see what number you're going to factor out of that expression to write um, a factored form expression. Let's look at the end part of this one. It says, use the following rectangular array to answer the questions below, okay? Fill in the missing information. Let's see, let's adjust this a little bit better. Okay, um, so this is a, this is supposed to be a standard form expression. This, the numbers or the terms in, this, in the boxes here represent the expression 15F plus 5G plus 45. And the number that goes here on the side is a number that would be a common factor to all these terms. A number that goes into 15, goes into five, and goes into 45. Hopefully you can see that that number has to be five. Five can go into 15, five, and 45. Then what would go on the top is what you get from each of these terms when you factor out a five or when you divide it by five. So 15f divided by 5 is 3f. I'll leave the other 2 for you to do. What's 5g divided by 5? That goes here. What's 45 divided by 5? That goes there. OK, so, that, so that's done. Fill in the missing information. We did it. Write the sum represented in the rectangular array. Oh, that's actually this over here. That, that sum is this, what I wrote right here. And then C says use the missing information from part A. So this stuff, this, this, this is for question C. Here, here, what you put here and what you put here. You need to write it in factored form or as a product of two factors here. So it should say five parentheses, three F plus something that was your job to get plus something that was your job to get and then close your parentheses. All right, and then lastly, we got write the sum as a product of two factors down here. Um, just look for a number that goes into all the terms you have there and then divide that out. So uh, let's see here. When I look at that first one, I got 81 and 48. What's a number that goes into 81 and goes into 48? It's three. So you could factor out a three and then what goes in the parentheses after that is 81w divided by 3 plus 48 divided by 3. What goes into 10 and goes into 25? 5. So you could factor out a 5 from this one and be left with, what is 10 divided by 5? 2 minus 25 divided by 5 is five, but don't forget your T. Make sure your T's don't look like plus symbols. Make them taller, give them a curl at the bottom, whatever you got to do. All right, so for this last one, figure out what goes into 12, 16, and 8. You have a couple of different options there, so it doesn't really matter which one you pick. They're both right. Um, and factor it out. All right, that's it.